Alert! A large unidentified object detected southwest of Crow's Nest 1. The staff looks all around in shock and panic. And a large shadow obscures the light coming from outside for a second. So they're like, what the heck? And then... You know, just like when a, a big cloud comes overhead on a sunny day and then suddenly it's like darkness for, for a second or two. That's what happens. Jake runs to the balcony to see what it could be. He has like a, an intuition. So he goes out, opens the sliding door. And before him, he sees in the sky a large silhouette flying in midair. First, it flies away from the building. So you can imagine Jake is me. So it flies away. And then it starts doing a U-turn. And as it does so, Jake glimpses what it looks like. And it looks like whatever it is, it has a tr long translucent tail. The silhouette starts flying back. And Jake is struck by the chilling sight of a dozen red eyes staring at him from the darkness and accelerating towards him. Jake is frozen for an instant and he lets out... What the fuck? There's a dragon outside. There is a sort of long crater where fashionable architecture once stood. Looks like that is where the dragon impacted. And of course, there's also a bunch of broken glass. A whole face of the penthouse has just been torn apart and you can see the night sky from uh, beyond there. There is also a lot of liquid all over the ground and tons of debris. Is that blood or just champagne? Did many people die upon impact? Hi everyone, welcome back to Ermin Black's cybernetic mega tower. A story I've been improvising using Zach Bess Conjectural Roleplaying Game Master Emulator, which is a tool to play RPGs by yourself, where you must play a character and come up with the story at the same time, and you use uh, random chance and dice rolls to simulate. Uh, game Master and I've been combining the system with Dread uh, which is uh, meant to tell suspenseful and horror stories using a Jenga tower, a tower of wooden blocks. Whenever my character makes an action that could fail I have to pull a block from the tower. If the tower falls that character dies. Now I have the difficult task of determining how I'm gonna get back into the game. So I already thought about this a little bit before uh, starting the recording and I could start with Jake. The, the dragon was headed towards him um, right where we left off. Or I could start with either Eleanor or Father Zorg. Father Zorg was in uh, Ermin Black's office, not far from um, Jake. So I decided to go with Jake. And it's gonna be seen to stuck in the cybernetic maze. But before I begin, I must adjust my Jenga tower because we already pulled out a bunch of pieces as uh, the characters were interacting with one another. So if my notes were uh, detailed enough, we have 
13 blocks to pull. Uh, do note that if the tower falls now, I will be kind on myself and uh, I'll just rebuild it. All right. First one. We're on two. Three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Eleven, twelve, and thirteen. Okay, there we go. <laughs> now the tower is looking uh, a lot closer to what it did last time. <laughs> and uh, I gotta tell you, um, this is gonna be tense for me because the tower is already pretty wobbly. The table is not totally level. Um, it's secured better than last time, but uh, still, you know, um, <laughs> I think it's gonna fall in a couple of pulls uh, unless I'm very lucky. So that's great. <laughs> Jake starts to come back to his senses. He's on the ground and he feels like his head is spinning. He tries to remember what just happened. Wherever he is, is dimly lit. If it wasn't for the bright red blinking light, he would barely see a thing. So we're not so sure where he is yet. Um, I have two questions right off the bat. First is, is Jake hurt? This will be a CRG Luma Fate question. So we are not in two knowledge. We are in two conflict. And it's a 84. Yes, he is injured. So I will pull a block to make the injury less severe. He was thrown on the ground by some sort of impact. Hopefully he got lucky and it's not gonna bleed out just yet. All right, that is good. Whew. Okay, now I have another question. Is the dragon still there? It's just gonna be a Luma Fate question. Um, hmm. Either way will be tricky, so I don't really have a preference on this one. 28. It means the dragon is no longer there. Now 
I will come up with what happened next. Jake is starting to make sense of his jumbled memories. There was a dragon out there and he flew right into the building. Remembers getting hit by one of his wings and being thrown off across the penthouse. Ironically, it looks like he got thrown off right near to the bar. The place seems empty. But are those corpses he's seeing? And crap. Trying to move his left arm sends waves of pain cursing throughout his body. Looks like that arm is broken. Thankfully, it doesn't seem like he's bleeding, but that doesn't mean he's safe from any internal harm. So right there, this is one of our new priorities. There is a medical center right near the penthouse. So hopefully we can still have access to it and uh, tend to any internal bleeding that might be threatening Jake. Jake props himself up on the bar. He can see a lot of destruction in front of him. There is a sort of long crater where fashionable architecture once stood. Looks like that is where the dragon impacted. And of course there's also a bunch of broken glass. A whole face of the penthouse has just been torn apart and you can see the night sky from uh, beyond there. There is also a lot of liquid all over the ground and tons of debris. Is that blood or just champagne? So I have two questions to ask the Loom of Fate to give us a little bit more context before we move forward from this location. Did many people die upon impact? So blood or champagne? Or something else, perhaps. And then there'll be... Can Jake remember what happened right after the impact? Let's start with how many people die. Did a lot of them die? Yes or no? 58. Ooh, that is not a good thing. 58 is a yes. Lots of people died when the dragon flew into the building. Now, will Jake be able to remember what happened right after the impact? Or is he in the dark, literally and figuratively? Can you remember? Looks like 65. That's good, at least he can remember. The alarm casts its red light across the apartment. And this time, Jake can see the bodies of the rest of the staff. So I will pull uh, in from the tower for Jake's uh, psychological distress. I hope uh, he doesn't just lose it at the side of carnage he's, he's seeing. Uh, okay, let's try to get a good one. That's not gonna screw me over. All right. There we go. Pretty wobbly already. Which uh, I'm not enthused about. But at least Jake is not gonna freak out right now. Jake also remembers hearing lots of commotion after he got knocked down. People were screaming and running around. Lots of robotic guards made their way to the dragon. But they seem to have been defeated by him. Since Jake can see a few of their robotic husks strewn across the floor. So he sees just a bunch of dead robots, you know, just 
lying there half broken looks like they were crushed by huge claws like the ones used by firefighters so the penthouse if i look at my map i said i had a multi-bedroom floor a pool a cinema but also a security room so i wonder is there anything useful in the security room even so much as just an indication of where everyone is has gone or maybe where the dragon could be so let's ask the loom is there anything useful in the security room also you might see i have some tokens now there because i totally forgot about the the surge functionality in um, crge so since i had four plain results four plain yes or no results i get four tokens so it's gonna sway the results of my roll more towards the unexpected let's see so i have uh, 20 plus 10 which is 30 and four tokens which makes it 22. Ah, that is a no. Ah, so nothing from the security room. Okay, well, then I suppose I'll just have to see if I can get to the health floor. Jake goes into the security room on the other side of the crater. You can see this is where the security robots came from. There are a good half dozen empty housing pods there. Apart from that, he sees two locked out computers. I'm not gonna get very far with those, he thinks to himself. Feeling his arm stinging badly again, Jake goes through the main door and out into the hallway. He's looking for the elevators. Hopefully they'll still be working. I'm gonna roll on the Luma Fate. To answer the question, are their elevators still functioning? Are they functioning enough to get to the health floor, which is just below? So I have five surge tokens. So I have 10 and then five, I think. So 15 minus... Um, 10 so I get a 5 mmm interesting it's no but no elevators but that's probably a security uh, stairs shaft so that's good at least uh, Jake is not stuck there until the future cops come uh, rescue him which uh, I wouldn't give much uh, for his hide if uh, he had to wait all this time. The elevator is definitely out. In place of the metallic doors, Jake can see the empty elevator shaft. Moreover, the sides of one of the elevators seems scarred up and mangled. As if a large metallic object had been forced through the entrance. Thankfully, there are stairs available nearby, but there again, it looks like the door has been messed with. Instead of being wide open like the elevator doors, this one is bent in the middle and jammed shut. Just imagine, you know, if someone punches into a door like the Hulk punches into a door. The door is going to kind of bend, you know, like, well, that's the just how it looks to Jake. It's bending towards him and it is jammed shut. 
because the mechanism must have broken when whatever hit it. And Jake will have to force his way through if he wants to go downstairs. With one pull, he'll get through the door, but he might hurt himself with broken glass or sharp angles. But with two pulls, he would uh, go through it safely. So I will start with one, and then I'll see how I feel about the second one. Because I'm not about to kill my Jake. I'd rather Zorg die. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's not for me to decide. But it is for me to be careful. Oh, it's moving a lot. Okay. Okay, I will try to see if it's reasonable. Yeah, it's moving bad, people. It's starting to get really hard. Okay, I'm... Um, uh, screw it, I'm not gonna pull the second one. He, he finds some kind of um, bit of rubble, maybe a little bit of brick or something like that he can handle and he just smashes it into the door. But then there's like bits of glass that kind of caught him. Now he's really got to find um, that uh, health uh, floor and get into one of those machines. Otherwise, he's uh, in um, big danger now. But I think it's time to cut to another character. After all, we have three of them. We can't be only focusing on Jake. I want to ask a question before I um, choose which character I'm going to go to. And my question is, is one of the other characters directly being threatened by the dragon? At the moment where Jake is uh, going through the door? Are we going to get a scene with the dragon? Or are we going to get a slightly different scene? So I don't have a search counter anymore. So it's a vanilla roll. We have an 80. A 7. 87. Ah, it's even a yes and. It's going to be a really tricky situation. Okay, um... I will roll I will I will roll a D20 if I get one through ten that'll be Father Zorg. If I get eleven through twenty, it's gonna be Eleanor. Sorry, didn't mean to drop it yet. So let's see who it is. I guess it's Fire Zorg. Fire Zorg in trouble. Mm, I'm not too against that. Fire Zorg and Ermin Black have been cooped up in the panic room of the security floor for a good 30 minutes now. The room is empty, save for a couple of chairs and a love seat where Ermin is seated. There are also a couple of weapons behind thick bulletproof glass. You know, one of those weapon cases that, uh, you know, looks a little bit like uh, one out of uh, James Bond or a uh, John Wick movie. And with a little pad you have to press on to get uh, to the weapons. Guarding the two men is one of the remaining robot guards. He's just standing in one of the corners of the room, looking at them uh, to make sure they're okay. We haven't seen your bodyguard in a good half hour, Black. I think the beast got him, says uh, Fire Zorg. Just be patient, the millionaire replies. I have designed every inch of this building, and there is no safer place than this one. Zorg hates it when he's not in control. 
every minute that passes, no, every second makes his blood boil. Looks like those guns are either not meant for us, or they won't trust us with them. Firezorg thinks to himself. While Ermin Black got mightily wounded by a piece of broken glass when the dragon first impacted the penthouse, the transhumanist guru is still in top shape. And this is in no small part thanks to the head of the bodyguard who exfiltrated them mere seconds after this weird techno dragon of sorts started rampaging through the top floor. This room seems well fortified, but can it withstand a supernatural foe? Well, we'll see about that, won't we? Because my question for the loom to see what happened next is, can they hear the dragon somewhere in the vicinity? Ooh, so we have got a 10 and another 10, so it's 20. 20 is a simple no, which means I'm gonna get a search token. Okay, I suppose that is good. Unable to stay put any longer, Father Zorg puts his head to the door and he listens for a good long time. For at least a few minutes. He can't hear anything out of the ordinary. There's no low, heavy sounds or anything that might indicate the presence of this dragon. The only noise he can hear is the same one that runs throughout the building. Electronic clicks and whirring fans. Fans spinning. The sounds of the digital era. But before heading out, Zorg attempts to convince Ermin to let him get a weapon from the locked case. So the way I'm gonna do this, since a weapon would be quite a big advantage, I'm gonna roll on the Loom of Fate uh, to see if he gives him excess. And if it's a yes, then I will also uh, pull from the Jenga Tower. Because I figure, you know, uh, big businessmen, they're not known for being very trustworthy. And I don't know if I would uh, let some uh, guru guy just take one of my uh, overpowered weapon when I'm very vulnerable and, uh, you know, it could easily kill me and uh, the robot with it. So, yeah. Um, to me, it seems like a, a bit of a... Uh, an extra difficult task to do, so there's very little chance uh, he's gonna get that. But hey, maybe Zorg is gonna be lucky. So let's roll. Ooh, <laughs> okay, that is uh, quite an intense uh, answer. So it's zero and two. So the result is two, which, spoiler alert, that is not a yes. That is probably, and it's even at zero because of my surge. So surge is definitely going away. And no and unexpectedly. I have to roll a d20 to determine what happens. And wow, it's another two. I guess that's just what we're having right now. It's called tying off. The main thread resolves or substantially moves forward in this scene. This does not mean that the main thread cannot create a follow up threads. Wow, that is a bit of a head scratcher, this one. How can the Narrative substantially move forward. Oh. Yeah, I guess I know. 
The context is that they are in imminent danger from the dragon. And this is something unexpected. All right, that means I have a follow-up question that might tip you off at the to what I have in mind. My question is going to be does something suddenly affect Father Zorg? 61 It's a yes. Okay. Father Zorg was about to ask for the code when he realizes his mouth won't move. He's jarred by this. Then he gets a warning from his internal operating system that a digital intrusion has been detected. He turns around and sees the guard robot staring coldly into his eyes. One of the lights on its cranium is blinking, as if a data transfer is currently in process. Are you okay? asks Erman. Now Zorg has to do one pull for whatever is happening with his operating system. Okay, let's not mess this up. I want to give as many chances as possible to all the characters, even though some of them are more likable than others. Let's not fuck it up. Okay. Okay. Zorg loses consciousness. We now cut to Eleanor. And right off the bat, since I don't know where she's located, I want to ask, is Eleanor on the health floor? Because that's where we've seen her last. She was in the little tour with uh, Ermin Black and Father Zorg and uh, the VIP guests. So she might still be there and just hiding somewhere. Or she might be elsewhere, who knows. So is she on the health floor? Oh boy. I'm a low roller today. We have a four minus two, which is another two. Uh, more unexpected things. Uh, I love it. I'm kidding. I do kind of enjoy that. And now I shall throw the G20. Oh, come on. I literally got another two. I'm I'm gonna re-roll this because it's like a bit ridiculous to have exactly the same roll. There is a four. Which is costume change. Hmm. An NPC drastically changes their mind, motivations, alliances, etc. for better or worse. This could be a big story reveal or a simple change of heart. Okay, this is simple. I know what it is going to be. It's go it goes right into what I had in mind. Eleanor is not in a very good place right now. She has been hiding near the security stairs on the security floor for a little while. She doesn't know for how long um, because she's actually been snorting the little bit of drugs she always carries on herself. It's her coping mechanism and today she really needs it <laughs> and uh, can surely um, understand that because uh, wow, the drugs have kicked in and she feels bolder than usual now. Being fairly good with technology, she already figured out that the door to the lower levels is magnetically shut. As in, it's shut through a security device. An electronic security device, I might add. It has to do with the security lockdown that Robot Voice announced after she heard 
A huge crash coming from upstairs. Is it a bomb? Is it a terror attack? Is it just a bad accident? She doesn't know. The only thing she knows is that she's not willing to stay here and wait to find out. She's got to get out of here ASAP. So she goes into the hallway of the security floor. And I have a question. Does she meet the head bodyguard? Because we are not sure exactly when that is. So maybe the head bodyguard encountered her. Or maybe something happened to him already. So let's see. I hope she runs into him. It would be really useful for her to know uh, that there's a... Something very dangerous uh, roaming around the place. Otherwise, yeah, I don't know how long she's gonna manage on her own. We'll see though. Maybe she'll outlive all of my characters. Well, 88 looks like. We have our meeting. So our 88 was a yes and. Therefore, as soon as Eleanor gets out in the hallway, she sees someone coming with a flashlight. She freezes for a second and then sees a man in a suit with a gun drawn and a finger to his lips. He gestures for her to go back inside the flight of stairs and shuts the door behind them. The security guard starts talking with her. He realizes she doesn't know about the dragon, so he simply says, Ma'am, we have a dangerous threat to deal with. I need to know, are you hurt? She says she's fine, and the guard continues, You can trust me, we'll get you out of here. Then he explains, someone needs to go to the mainframe to get the security door unlocked. I think there are hostiles there, otherwise those doors would already be open. My question is, is the security guard gonna ask her to help him? Or is he just gonna say, stay there, I'll try to deal with it myself. We have a... 37 this is going to be a no so the bodyguard will go there himself the bodyguard leaves her and goes back into the hallway Eleanor stays put for a while she has a bad feeling about what's going to happen she can't shake the idea that something bad is about to strike the guard. And then she'll be on her own again. On the other hand, maybe he'll get to the mainframe, open the door for her, and she'll be the first one out of the building. That doesn't sound too bad, actually. But then something takes her out of her daydreaming. It's a loud noise coming from above her head coming from a couple levels uh, above in the security as there. She hears a loud noise followed by the sound of broken glass. When she hears that, she freezes again. She hears footsteps going down the stairs. But whoever this is seems to have stopped at the floor above. I have two Jenga pieces. I want Eleanor to pull. One is to prevent her from taking another bump of drug. If she is really drugged out, she's probably gonna get herself killed by being careless. So I wouldn't want that. And another one to have the courage to see what uh, is going on upstairs. That's what I prefer her to do. So I'll start by pulling for her to have courage. And I'll see how good I feel about the second pull. 
Oh boy, I don't want to kill Eleanor. I really don't. I really don't want to kill her. And this is really dodgy now. Oh, okay. That's one. Okay, I'm gonna pull again for the bump to prevent it. Oh, this is shady. Oh, boy. Oh, it's moving. Don't move, please. Okay. Okay, we got it. Okay, awesome. So Eleanor is going to be um, moderate with her habit and she's going to be courageous. We are back to Jake. Jake arrives on the medical floor. According to a little floor map he spots on the wall, the floor is home to a plastic surgeon, a battery clinic, a Planned Parenthood clinic, and what they dub the Health Factory. I will ask the Luma Fate if Jake is able to hear anything coming uh, down from further away in the hall where the clinics are, you know? You can imagine you enter the room, you have the elevator on one side, the, the security uh, stairs on the other, and then it continues into a hallway, and then like a little space where all the clinics are. It's kind of like a tiny little shopping mart, except it's all one level, little plaza, and then the shops on uh, either side. So let's see how good are Jake's ears. It looks like a 30 to me. And then a 9. 39. Yeah, that's just a normal no. Jake couldn't hear anything. And he starts making his way down the hallway. Towards the little plaza. Even though he can't hear anything out of the ordinary, he would rather not come face to face with a 12-eyed dragon. So he goes in stealthily. And I will have to pull for that. Which uh, I'm not too hyped up about. But I guess it has to be done, so please do not die, Jake. Please don't. Oh, this is bad. Oh no, I don't want to touch there. Okay. This, maybe? That one? Oh, that one is good. <sighs> yeah, the tower is not hanging on by much. I feel like I'm not gonna make it through to the end of this little section without it falling. <laughs> but eh, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Okay, it. it Managed to be stealthy. Awesome. Jake arrives in the plaza. And... There's a lot more corpses there. They are the bodies of the VIP guests. The ones that remained there when things went south. But what's odd about them is their wounds. So, you know, they're strewn about, some of them on the benches, some of them against the wall. It's a really a carnage. And they have bullet wounds. With no evidence of superhuman strength, like the victims of the dragon. So either the dragon is arrayed with guns. Secret gun dragon. Or, there's another danger lurking around here. And now I will ask the Luma Fate, does this other danger rear his ugly head right now? Or is it gonna be in a little while? Oof. 
So that is a 80 plus 3, 83 plus 2 for the search token, which is 85. Yes. And oh boy. Okay. Jake suddenly hears a sort of police alarm. He looks in the direction of the sound and sees a robot guard coming out of the health factory. Our protagonist sees the robot as his weapons drawn and he realizes he found the culprit. He ducks under one of the little benches that in the plaza in the hopes that the robot will not see him there. This is gonna be our last pull of this video and it's gonna decide whether or not Jake dies right there or if he survives into our next episode. I cross my fingers. I really hope we're gonna get through that one. I guess cue the suspenseful music and um, I give him the old college try. Okay. Oh. Okay, this is. Oh. Oh, this might be good. Please, 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 please. Oh, it's moving a lot. I don't know. This one. That one. No. It's really moving a lot, folks. I am not making a PewDiePie out of this, I'm not playing it up, it's actually... Oh! That's not bad. Okay, I think we're safe now. Okay, we did it! We did it! Wow! We got through another long episode without toppling the tower. I'm quite happy about that. <laughs> it was really tense for me, so hope it was really tense for you guys as well. Just let me close this out before um, I end it there. So the robot goes around and he doesn't spot our protagonist. So he's safe for now, but on the next episode, he's gonna have to find a way to get to uh, one of the clinics that will help him, which it's not many of them, and to not get caught by the robot, or maybe to turn off the robot in some way, which <laughs> will be a challenge either way. So... I hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you look forward to the next video. Um, for those of you who are following my work a little bit more closely, let me give you a tiny little peek into what I'm planning to do next. My next video, if it's not the last or second to last episode of this little series, it's probably going to be a video about Mythic solo RPG. Yes, I've been playing the one of the competitors to Zach Best's CRG, which is one of the systems I've been using today. And I'm really enjoying it. I've been playing quite a bit of Dungeons and Dragons with it. Um, like I spent hours and hours uh, in the last uh, two weeks playing it. And it's really good. And I think I'm gonna do a sort of review slash explanation video like I did with CRGE. And um, yeah, I think you guys are really gonna like it because that system is really good. It was slightly painful for me to go back to CRG, although I like it a lot, and it is simpler than Medic. 
but Metek has been really good to me. It works really well with Dungeons and Dragons. And um, it's not just 50-50 with every action. That's the big uh, draw. And it also creates a smaller scene, which is kind of nice. But anyway, enough rambling. You'll learn a lot more about this topic in a future video. And now this video comes to an end. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, this episode is a lot more um, in line with how Dread is usually played. I hope you're also feeling the suspense like I've been feeling it. <laughs> that Jenga Tower is one egg of an invention, is it? Um, so I think we're gonna get one last episode out of this. Maybe two if that is a very long one. Um, I'm pretty hyped to see how it's gonna end. Um, it took quite a few turns that I didn't anticipate. So, that's cool. Anyway, uh, love you guys and tune in for the next video uh, whenever I manage to get enough time to put one together. Alright, bye everyone!